Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Tonight is Wednesday, April 26th, 2023, and this is episode 280. Welcome to those of you watching live, and hello to my replay warriors. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. Tonight, we're gonna be making two projects together. I've got a diagonal, treat box or a diagonal closure treat box and then a diagonal panel card which is really easy and a great way to showcase both sides of your designer series paper we're going to move kind of quick tonight because i am preparing to head out of town for my dad's memorial service i will be out of the office after tonight's live stream until tuesday may 2nd i will be checking emails um, but only responding to those that are urgent, uh, just to enjoy time with my family this weekend and celebrating my dad. So um, I will have project sheets for tonight's projects posted at some time, at some point tonight before I go to bed. So keep your eye on the video description so that you can make these projects. Now they are using some brand new products that won't be available until Tuesday, May 2nd. So I will likely need to update those project sheets on May 2nd with the products that are new that are not available at the moment. So uh, Brian, say hello. <laughs> My husband Brian is watching your questions and comments tonight. If you do have a question for me, be sure to put a cue before that question. That will make it into my queue when we do the Q&A at the end of the live stream. I'll focus on tonight's projects and then I will answer all of your questions rapid fire at the end. I'll stay on until I've got all your questions answered. Looking forward to that. Let's see, when you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. And the easiest way to earn Pixie Perks is to use my current host code. Uh, to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto-magically add my current host code for you, so you don't have to remember to do that. Now, if your order is a big order of $150 or more, you'll want to make sure to remove the host code because you'll actually earn stamp and rewards on that order. You'll also still earn Pixie Perks as well. We only have a few more days left of the last chance promotion. The, these are retiring products from the outgoing annual catalog and the outgoing mini catalog. The last chance products are available through Monday, May 1st. While supplies last, products are discounted up to 60% off. So take a second, third, or fourth look perhaps at the last chance list just to make sure that there isn't anything you want to grab before it's gone uh, after May 1st. Now May 2nd uh, launches the 2023 to 2024 annual catalog. I'm so excited about that. So I have a couple of things that I've got available with the launch of that catalog. Here is the beautiful cover of that catalog. That's all I can show you until May 2nd. But I am offering product shares. This is a great mixture to get a sampling of designer series papers and specialty papers and the new ribbons. You can get one or the other or both. If you choose both, the paper and ribbon, you also get to choose a free gift up to $8 in value. And let's see, the deadline for signing up for my product shares is Sunday, April 30th. Payment deadline is Monday. And I'm pretty strict about those deadlines, especially with me traveling. Um, so any unpaid invoices after May 1st will be canceled because I'm making an order first thing Tuesday morning, May 2nd. So if you've already signed up for product shares and you didn't see an invoice from me, I have invoiced everyone starting on April 25th. Be sure to check your spam folder um, if you don't see it in your inbox. As always, you can reach out to me at support at thepaperpixie.com, but keep your eye on your inbox for that invoice. But again, April 30th, the place to sign up is thepaperpixie.com slash shares. Also, the deadline for In Color Club is Sunday, April 30th as well. Um, this is a great way to get some happy mail over the next five months. Each month is will focus on one of the five new in colors, Copper Clay, Wild Wheat, Boho Blue, Moody Mauve, or Pebbled Path, or I should say and Pebbled Path, because you will get all of the in color products for a color each month. It's a really, really fun way. You get a hand stamped card from me as well, and then a surprise free gift each month as well. So again, deadline to sign up for that is Sunday as well. That just gives enough time for me to get invoices and your payment to come through by May 1st. I will also be placing 
the first In Color Club month's order uh, first thing on Tuesday as well, okay? And with the color refresh, I've also updated my Stampin' Blends labels. You'll see there's actually 72 colors represented here. These are circular labels that you can use a 3 8 of an inch circle punch and add those to the ends of your Stampin' Blends. Just to show you an example of what that looks like, it's a great way to see the color on the markers at quick glance instead of having to try to look at the side there. So that's an $8 digital download. Your one-time purchase comes with updates for the life of Stampin' Blend. So as long as those are a current product, I will keep them updated and you'll have access to the most recent update with that one-time purchase, okay? All right, why don't we jump into tonight's projects? I actually don't have show and tell tonight. I told you we were gonna move a little bit quickly. Um, I have just a few things to finish tonight. Uh, project sheets and I'm prepping for an event that I'm doing and I also need to finish writing Dad's eulogy and that is always one of those things that's, well, always, like I do that all the time. <laughs> My brain is fried. It's a difficult thing to try to wrap up all the things that I want to say about my dad in a succinct, I have, I have all my notes down, but it's a matter of just organizing my thoughts. So um, we'll be working on that tonight as well. So me and the kids are headed out tomorrow and Brian will join us Friday and we will just celebrate our dad with the best of people looking forward to family time. Family time's the best time, right? So um, let's see, let's go ahead and start with the 3D project tonight. I love this box. <clears throat> there was a German demonstrator, and I apologize, I forgot to write her name down, but it is on my blog post. I shared a similar box to this on, uh, gosh, back in 2020, I believe, or it might have gone all the way back to 2018. I've done a couple versions of this, all different sizes. I um, converted her measurements, and I, I'm so sorry that I don't have her name. I will make sure that that's included in my blog post when I post this, but it is such a cool... I, I don't know, the the, um, the mechanics of this box I'm obsessed with. So it actually looks like this, but when you close it, it's got this really cool diagonal closure. And this designer series paper, let me show you what it looks like. We'll talk about those products briefly and then we'll jump into the project. Let's see, did I leave? Oh, can you hand me that designer series paper? Yes, please. Thank you. So this is from the new catalog. This is Fresh as a Daisy. There's a whole suite, but I wanted to show you this beautiful designer series paper. It's one of my favorites next to the one that I shared with you last week. I love this one because these you can just cut down for card fronts and you're ready to go. So you're seeing both front and back here. This is the back side of that, but it's a beautiful kind of um, paint brushed look here. This is the Moody Mauve. And this designer series paper really showcases our five new in colors plus a couple of other additional colors as well but how fun are these I don't know this pattern is so bright and cheery I almost used that one tonight really really pretty designer series paper this is the one we're using tonight and this is the back side of that I love it so much I've already used a whole sheet of it <laughs> oh, this is a fun one too where you got the daisies along the bottom I'm making a mess here. Really pretty, unique color combinations too. I just love the way this looks. So let me tell you what colors are in here. We have got Azure Afternoon, Boho Blue, Bubble Bath, Cajun Craze, Copper Clay, Crushed Curry, Early Espresso, Garden Green, Lemon Lolly, Moody Mauve, Pebbled Path, Pretty Peacock, and Wild Wheat. So talk about a lot of amazing colors in there. Handing that back to you, thank you. And then we've got, I haven't even um, put this into my normal organization uh, packaging yet, but Cheerful Daisies Bundle. Uh, we're gonna be using the Wishing You the Brightest Birthday sentiment tonight and then the You Made My Day sentiment, but I love this. Oops, a daisy, so sorry. Really, really beautiful. This is a photopolymer set, and here are the dies that go with it. You can make some absolutely stunning daisies and Cone flowers, I think that's what that is. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is that <laughs> Brian is way more of a green thumb than I do, but really, really a great set of dies. And I love this little sentiment piece. You've got the stitched edge around it as well, it adds a really nice touch. And then we're also going to be using the in color dots. <laughs> I was waiting for them to have like a fancy name in color dots. So you've got all five of the new in colors there. We'll use that tonight as well. So 
All right, so I'm using, what's this color called? Copper clay. <laughs> uh, this piece measures six inches by nine and a half inches. So you can only get one of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. Now, if you are working with 12 by 12, you can get two of these out of 12 by 12. And I'm gonna come in with the Simply Scored here and along the short side, I'm just gonna go ahead and score this at two inches from each side. So two inches and two inches. And then I'm gonna turn it to the long side and we're just gonna score this at two, four, six, and eight. Two, four, six, eight. So really easy. Two, or you could do two and four, but I love to kind of do two and then switch it to, and then we're doing two, four, six, and eight. Now you will notice this one section here on the right, or depending how you're looking at it, is just slightly smaller. So you'll want to pay attention to that. Otherwise, the rest of these squares are all uh, equal squares, two inch by two inch. I'm going to hold on to the stylus here. We're going to do a couple of diagonal score lines. I wanna bring in the template. I added a little extra to this template because I wanted to make sure you knew where to put the designer series paper. Um, this is actually gonna be the bottom of the box. So there's no need to put designer series paper there. But what we're gonna do are these diagonal score lines here. Now this might be a little bit difficult to picture at the moment because I do show where we've, we're cutting away some of the cardstock, but let me show you. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is do the diagonal score lines and it's these ones here. So as long as you have this narrower section along the right side here, this is actually an inch and a half in width, the rest are two inches in width, we want to come to these two squares here. So if you're coming from the left, it's the second and third squares from the left, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and let me put that kind of up and out of the way for a minute. I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to score from this intersection so we're on the second vertical score line from the left, and I'm gonna go diagonally from this corner of the square to that corner of the square, and then from this corner to that corner. So lower right to upper left, lower left to upper right. So let me do that and show you. I like to put the stylus down first in that little intersection, and then if I can see my score lines, I'm gonna go ahead and score like so. So we're kind of going up and out there, okay? I'm gonna do that. It's kind of at the bottom of that diagonal score line and go up and out again. So it looks like that, okay? Now I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side, but now it's gonna be the second and third squares from the right. So basically just pay attention, it's the same two squares, just the opposite side of the cardstock. like that, okay? And that's all the scoring that we need to do. So let me make sure I put my stylus back. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines except for the diagonal ones. We'll do, do those in a minute. I'm gonna bring this guy back in just a second. So I folded and burnished in all the score lines besides the diagonal, and now we're gonna do the diagonal. I kind of like to put my index finger right there on that straight score line, and I'm kind of pinching with my middle finger and thumb behind it, but we're just kind of turning it this way. So it's kind of going inside. Now what I do like to do is to come in and burnish. Because you've scored the cardstock, it should make it pretty easy to fold. So while this is sort of a mountain fold here. I'm kind of turning that into a valley fold to then go ahead and fold those diagonals. And then I just kind of take my time and then come in and burnish those diagonals. Paper's pretty forgiving once you've scored it. So now those kind of look like that, okay? But we've got a little bit of bulk there, so I wanna come in and remove it. I'm gonna show you a really quick and easy way to do that with just one cut to get these two tri triangles cut out. 
gonna actually pop those out again. So I'm folding on that score line, making sure those are popped out. I'm just gonna bring in my paper snips and I'm gonna remove this corner, but I'm only, but I'm gonna leave behind about three eighths of an inch of cardstock. So I'm just gonna follow that diagonal here. This does not have to be exact, just to pop that out. And then what you have is you've got rid of some of that bulk there. Really easy to do that. So then I'm just gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, leaving behind about three eighths of an inch. And what that three eighths of an inch does is it gives you a really nice finish to make this box have a, a nice finish right there on the diagonals. They just kind of add a little bit of extra oomph there on the side so you don't have a gap, okay? Now, we've got it looking like this. We've got a couple more cuts that we want to do. So we've got this section here where there's only the, th the, uh, the one two inch section. I'm just gonna cut up each of those vertical score lines and stop at the first horizontal. Like that. Now I'm turning it to the opposite side. I'm gonna cut up the vertical score lines. This time I'm gonna to go to the second horizontal score line. So in both instances, I'm kind of cutting right up to the section where we did those diagonal cuts. This is one of those boxes that it's so cool how it goes together. You, I had to stop everything to try to make one. It's just such a cool box. All right, like so. Now, we, it looks like a little man, doesn't it? With a tail. <laughs> um, I'm gonna remove some of the bulk here. So let me, I'm gonna put the template out of the way for a second. I like to do this with the paper trimmer because it goes a lot faster. So on this section, I'm gonna hide that middle section here and we're gonna remove the bulk here. What I like to do is line up that fold right there at the half inch score line, which is, or the half inch uh, measurement, which is the second vertical line from the left or to the left of the cutting groove. So one, two, lining that fold up there. That's the half inch mark and basically I'm removing the bulk and then I've got these little half inch tabs that remain, okay? I'm gonna repeat the same thing over here, only I'm gonna fold the two sections underway. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, lining up that fold at the half inch mark, so that second vertical line and cutting. And now you're gonna look like that, okay? It's so cool how this goes together. All right, so we've got these are tabs here, so I'm gonna fold that out of the way and I'm gonna come in and miter cut on all four of these tabs. Got an itch. <laughs> and the owls are out tonight. All right, so that's what we've done. We just miter cut those tabs. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. cleaned up. So now we are looking like that. And I think it's pretty close to our template here, like so. Okay, now I'm going to do um, a little bit of corner rounding and we're going to adhere some designer series paper. We'll also add the Velcro dots before we glue the box together. There's a fun way to line that up as well. So let me go ahead and bring in the designer series paper and the corner rounder. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I forget is I'm gonna round these two corners here. That is the closure of the box. Gives it a nice finish, like so. And then I've got three pieces of, what's the daisy name on that paper? It's on the back of that one. Fresh as a daisy. I will remember these names eventually. I've got three pieces that measure one and three quarter, whoops, there's extra pieces there. One and three quarter inches square, so three pieces. And then I've got two pieces that measure one and five eighths of an inch square. Now we've got to perform a little bit of surgery to these. I'm gonna cut them diagonally in half. And I just realized there's one more piece that I'm going to need that I forgot to cut. So. I'm gonna do that really quickly. It's doing so good. 
All right, so I need a piece that measures one and three quarters by one and a quarter. I'll repeat that in just a second once I get this cut. I'm gonna leave the paper trimmer out, but again, let me repeat those. So three, they're one and three eighths by one and three eighths. Nope. <laughs> three that are one and three quarters by one and three quarters. Two that are one and five eighths by one and five eighths. And then one that is one and a quarter by one and three quarters. Now this pattern is not directional, but if it was directional, you'd want this piece to be in landscape, okay? So the two one and five eighths inch pieces, we're gonna cut them on the diagonal from corner to corner. So I'm just gonna line up those corners right here in the cutting groove and cut. Like so, those are gonna fit on the sides of our box. Totally optional, but it really takes it up a notch. It showcases that diagonal closure. We got those two cut, okay? And again, you'd wanna kind of pay attention to the direction of the pattern to make sure you're cutting it the right way um, for the sides of the box. All right, so on that one piece that measures one and three quarters by one and one quarter, we wanna go ahead and round two of the corners. If it were directional, you wanna round the bottom two corners. I'll fit that in this detailed trio punch. Like so, okay? Now we can get to work gluing our designer series paper down. And I wanna bring the template in for reference so that you can see where we're putting the designer series paper. So first and foremost, we're gonna go ahead and glue this piece that has the rounded corners. I've got a fresh new bottle of glue tonight. <laughs> There we go. If I turn it this way, we can reference where the DSP goes, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to this piece. Lily went to the orthodontist today and got her um, braces, what do they call it? They rewire it to tighten them. And she's got rubber bands to wear. Um, and so today's, well, the next few days will be a challenge trying to get them on. They're little like eighth of an inch in diameter. So nearly impossible to get on. And my hands feel huge trying to help her get them on her teeth. But I told her it'll only get easier. All right, so we're skipping this one here. That's gonna be the bottom of the box. And then we'll put this one here. I love this pattern next to the copper clay. This would be pretty with the Moody Mauve as a base as well, or the, oh, these colors, Wild Wheat too. All right, so now the diagonal pieces that we cut, the one and five eighths inch square, those are going to go here and here, like so, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get these glued down. Then we'll add the Velcro dot. I'll show you how to line that up. And then we will glue this fun diagonal closure box together. And then you'll be amazed and have to make one because <laughs> they're so cool. All right. I wish you guys could hear the owls. <laughs> I 
They're, what are they? They're barred owls, right? Is that what we learned? Mm -hmm. And it's fun when there's a whole bunch of them kind of singing in uh, symphony. All right, so there we go. Didn't that look so cool? I love this paper. So that is the same here. We just left this square without designer series paper. So you'll be able to reference that on the project sheet to see exactly where to put the DSP, okay? All right, now, first we're gonna do our Velcro dot. Uh, let me grab that. So I love the thin clear fasteners. These are the five eighths of an inch. Um, I'm gonna grab one of those. And I'm gonna start by putting um, one of them on the back side of this rounded piece. So I'd like to peel the backing off the clear side or the hook side. I'm just going to pop that right there in the center, kind of close to the top there. Then I'll peel off the backing of the loop. Yeah, loop side. I always question myself on that, which is the more opaque side. I'm going to turn this sideways and I'm going to fold on the first score line from the left and the second score line from the right. So let me show you that before I do it again. First score line from the left, second from the right, and then just press that flat. So this is completely flat that lines up exactly where those Velcro dots need to go. And it's just easier to do that before we glue this box together. So we've got our dots in place there. And now what we're gonna do is on those half inch tabs that we created, we are gonna start by adding adhesive. So I'm just gonna start with one of them. And we're gonna line up this score line here with this cut edge to start the first box corner there. So just take your time, get your fingers kind of inside there and line up that edge. And then we're just going to work our way around to the remaining tabs. And it is just so cool how this goes together. Right. Same thing here and just keep in mind it is the closest or the adjacent edge that you're adhering the tabs to. And it's going to feel a little weird when you put it together initially because the way that it lays like this. Very different style box. And then we've got our last one here. And we'll just tuck that in and slide that into place. All right, so there is that. Now for the magic, when you fold this in, it becomes a square box. How cool is that? So you fill it with your treats and then just keep in mind it's about two inches square that fits on the inside. You're gonna have a little bit of space taken up by these tabs, but not much at all. And then you can just go ahead and close your box. And that Velcro dot is right where we need it to be. But I love the way that that looks on the side. Sometimes I pinch it just a little bit there down at the lower corner just to tighten that gap there. And I love that. So I wanted to use a product that actually is retiring, but it's still available and it's the Medium Daisy Punch. Uh, it's I think $10 on sale for $10 and 80 cents. If you don't already have it, I absolutely love it. So the Medium Daisy Punch, I'm just gonna punch two of those. I think this is my scrap piece. Yes, <laughs> making sure I'm not taking supplies from the card for tonight. So two daisies. And then I'm just gonna take my bone folder and curl those petals just a little bit to give it some dimension. Just kind of sandwiching the petals between the bone folder and my thumb. And then in case I make a mess with my glue, I'm just gonna bring in the silicone mat. 
and layer those on top of each other. Brian and I got new glasses this week and I'm trying to get used to the new, what's it called? Izen is what we have, like a stepping stone to bifocals. So we're trying to get used to it. Uh, the joys of getting older. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on the bottom of the daisy and we'll pop that right on the top here. And then I'm gonna grab one of the dots here. The, the largest of the, what's the color? Wild wheat. And pop that right in the center. And I thought a really cute, simple sentiment would be sweet for the front of this. So, all right, so you made my day is the sentiment from the Daisy stamp set. And I know I put the ink pad somewhere. Maybe right here. All right, so we're gonna be using the copper clay ink. And I'm just gonna stamp that on my scrap piece of basic white. And then we're gonna fussy cut it a little bit. I hear pitter patter. I don't think they're coming downstairs. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of do a, a little bit of a tight cut around that sentiment. Like so, and then I'm just gonna separate you made and my day to fit on the box. And we're gonna pop do that on the front. Just kind of eyeballing it in the center there. Oop, I put my fingers right in that glue. There we go. How cute is that? You made my day. This would be a really cute thing to give as a random act of kindness. Throw a little uh, treat in there. Probably a hand. You could probably do a couple of the um, uh, Lindor truffles. You can definitely fit a Ferrero Rocher. It's a little big for a Ferrero Rocher. I think another thing that might fit is um, like an EOS lip balm. I actually have one from the Dollar Tree. And I think this will definitely fit. This one's a little bit smaller, but I'm just gonna open it. <laughs> Cause I know y'all are gonna ask for things that'll fit. A handful of Hershey's Kisses would fit. Some, uh, oh, hand sanitizer. Is that one of them to try? I'll try that. So this I think is a little bit, I'll show you the wrapping here in a second. <laughs> Brian's just handing me stuff. <laughs> Um, this is the lip balm I found at Dollar Tree, and it's 0.3 ounces, but this is kind of big, actually. Or I should say, it's smaller than an EOS, but an EOS would fit, and this would fit as well. A little bit of room to spare. Um, you're just looking for stuff here. Um, pocket back will not fit. That's the Bath and Body Works. Um, but yeah, you could throw some... These will definitely fit a handful of those. Those are the Hershey's Nuggets. And we got a Mamba here. Will that fit? No. <laughs> Maybe at an angle. Yeah. Well, a Mamba does fit in there, but that's kind of a weird one. Anyways, you can get, I would say, a handful of Hershey's Kisses, Hershey's Nuggets, a couple of Lindor Truffles, um, EOS Lip Balm, just some fun stuff to fit in there. So... There we go, our diagonal closure treat box featuring that daisy paper and I added the retiring medium daisy punch to the top, um, but just a really sweet and fun 
box to make. So look for the project sheet for that. That will post at some point tonight. Let's go ahead and create our diagonal panel card here. This is a great card to use up your designer series paper. And yes, I say use up because we all save it and hoard it and are afraid to use it because it's so beautiful. Um, but this is a great way to showcase both sides without using a lot of paper. So I'm going to show you how I did the diagonals there. And it's perfect for a bold sentiment or a sentiment like this that I just love the way that it looks on an angle. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the layers of the card first. I know I put that uh, pattern paper somewhere. I'll find it. Um, all right, so I have got the Moody Mauve that measures four and a quarter inches by 11. It's probably under here somewhere, but I'll look for it. Four and a quarter by 11, and I've got it scored in half at five and a half inches. I'm going to turn that valley score line into a, nope, I'll get it, into a mountain fold and burnish like that. I've got a layer here. This is basic white that measures five and a quarter by four, and I'm just going to glue that to the inside. Feel free to stamp that with the sentiment if you like or decorate it. And if you are worried about messing up your notes, I always recommend waiting to adhere this piece until after you've written on it. That'll save you any mistakes there. That's for the inside. Then I have got wild wheat and this measures three and three quarters by five. And I've got basic white that measures three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And all these measurements will be on the project sheet. I had uh, a bunch of thank you cards I needed to make for this weekend and um, designed this with last week's paper, the country such and such. <laughs> I don't know the names, but... Um, I just loved the, the layout of it. It's quick and easy to go together and a great way to show off our designer series papers. So I've just layered those two together and I'm going to put those both on the front here. And I'm being brave. I will stamp this after the card has been assembled. What could go wrong? <laughs> All right, so what you're gonna need is a three and a half inch piece of designer series paper. And I think one of these is that size, or here's hoping. I this one, let's see. Yes, all right, so three and a half inches square. And I picked this pattern that we used for the diagonal closure box. And I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer. Now this goes a little bit more smooth when you don't have a directional pattern. If you do, however, you'd want your pattern to go top to bottom and then you're gonna turn it clockwise to where you've got a diagonally, okay? So if your pattern was directional, you'd want it to be in portrait or top to bottom. Turn it a quarter of a turn clockwise and then you're gonna line up the points in the cutting groove, okay? and then just go ahead and cut point to point. So again, three and a half inches square, and you're gonna grab the piece on the left if it were directional, and that piece is gonna go, that's our first piece that we're gonna adhere there, okay? Now this piece, you're just gonna turn it another quarter of a turn uh, clockwise to get that flat edge up to the top there. And then you're gonna line up the point on the cutting groove and we're gonna cut this in half now, like so. And we're gonna grab one of these pieces on the back to go onto our card. And I have to remember which, okay, so it's gonna go this way, where you've got the point of the triangle pointing to the left. And you can save this piece for another card. With this, you are going to have a couple of the smaller triangle pieces left over, but essentially the way that this is going to work is that's going to go there, and then this is just going to nestle right in there. As opposed to having, you know, two pieces, because one of the other things we could have done with this is... Oh, I cut into the other half. Uh, you could have cut it in half and you could have flip-flopped it, uh, but this will actually save you an extra triangle piece 
um, so that these just fit right together as opposed to having another full piece fitting underneath this triangle. It just saves you a little bit of paper there. So liquid glue, I'm going to come in and get the bigger piece put down. And I'm leaving about a sixteenth of an inch of the basic white uh, to pop as a layer next to this. I'll show you. The wild wheat is a sixteenth of an inch layer. And then I'm going to have about that amount of the basic white showing. You'll see that there. Okay, so these are kind of equal distant layers. I'm just going to slide that right into place there. And again, just keeping an eye on the white here and having that be a sixteenth of an inch. And if you've got any raised edges, just smooth them down with the bone folder. I do need to change my trimmer blade here, getting some fuzzy edges. Like that. I love that. All right, so now let's go ahead and stamp our sentiment. And this one says, wishing you the brightest birthday, <laughs> reading it upside down. So again, copper clay. Like so. So quick and easy. And that white really makes that copper clay pop. All right, one more embellishment, sorry. I'm gonna come in with a medium one of the wild wheat. And just pop that right here for a little bit of bling to finish off that quick and easy diagonal panel card. There we go. So just take a look at your designer series papers. You'll have fun with this layout. Again, I will have a project sheet that will show you a diagram of this and all the measurements. And these are the two projects that we made, the coordinating projects tonight, the diagonal closure treat box and the diagonal panel card. So I hope you love those. Let's go ahead and tee up tonight's Q&A here. Get that pulled on up. Oh, Gregor's is here. In case you guys don't know, that's my brother. <laughs> Ooh, Cindy's kicking it off here. Do I know one of my projects that will fit biscotti cookies? Four and a half inches long, one and three quarter inches tall, and three quarter inches wide. I'm thinking... It's probably going to take me a little bit, Cindy, to take a look at projects on my blog for that. There's not a way to search by my, my projects by measurements, but I am trying to think of a way to do that. Um, There's nothing on biscotti RHM? Yeah, I didn't do anything specifically for biscotti, but I'm sure I've got something that might fit. Uh, yeah, let me think about that, Cindy. Um, I'll add that to my list, and I'll reach out to you if I can figure out a project that might fit for you. Great idea though, biscotti cookies. Where is the six and a quarter inch mark on the paper cutter when the arm is extended? I have a hard time finding it. Believe it or not, the six and a quarter, let me flip this to here, is, let me get my, my little pointer here. It is the very last, I'm gonna try to pick up the light here the very last measurement right there so if you count one two three four measurements from six that is six and a quarter now when the arm is extended it is again that last little tick mark right there on the paper trimmer you know hard to show and i'm not surprised that it's hard for you to find it margaret because it is literally that last line on the trimmer okay i hope that helped you All right, let's see. Cindy, I gotcha. I will, I see your question. I'll send you an email with your link for your invoice. Um, great question, Yvette. Shoot me an email. Um, actually, the, actually, I can answer that. Per policy, I cannot send you one invoice um, because I only order the products once each month and I'm only able to invoice up to a week before I place the product order. So it's a Stampin' Up! rule. I'm not able to invoice you for the remaining four months. 
Are there any demonstrators in Sweden? I'm trying to think. I don't know if we have a market in Sweden. I should know that. Hmm. I don't... I'm not sure. Maybe somebody in the chat can answer that. That one stumped me for tonight, and it's probably because I'm tired, but great question. Debbie, you can find my um, business mailing address at the paperpixie.com slash contact. If you just go to the paperpixie.com and click on um, contact, I think is what's in the menu, you'll see my business address there um, where you can send happy mail. Thank you. It is the, yes, the uh, sweet... Hold on, I can't show you the catalog, but let me look it up. I know it was on page 110. The Fresh as a Daisy Sweet Collection, Yvette. Page 110 in the new um, annual catalog. Uh, Barbara, I will check that. Can you, uh, do you have a pen and paper? Actually, I will write it down. She, um, Barbara needs her invoice. She, she found it. She found it? Okay, perfect. Yeah, it'll come up later, just make sure. Okay, awesome. How do you think of these super cute things? You know, I get in inspired by a bunch of different things. Sometimes it's um, packaging that I see on Pinterest, not necessarily Stampin' Up! specific, um, but it'll kind of give me an idea for a closure or kind of a unique box. I get lots of inspiration from other demonstrators and other paper crafters. Um, it's an amazing community, uh, paper crafting is. So yeah, Pinterest, um, the catalog, um, and then other kind of, if I'm, you know, shopping in the candy section, they usually have a lot of cool boxes as well that give me some ideas. So kind of get inspiration in a lot of places. Ooh, Laura, the first color in color to ship is a surprise because I actually, each person that participates, um, you all don't get the same in color uh, because I purchased some of the products come with all five colors. So it's mixed up. It's a surprise each month which color you will get. Okay, gotcha, Barbara. Let's see. How much time in cardstock does it usually cost you when designing a new three-dimensional project? Great question, Julianne. I've actually never um, calculated it. Uh, Paper is actually really inexpensive if you think about it on a per page price. Um, so I actually don't hold back when I'm trying to create something. Um, I think I've said before, uh, my upline Brian and um, his friend Lydia have said, create for the trash can, because that's kind of where the magic happens. So yeah, I, um, it all depends on the project. Tonight, I decided to go back to past projects because I needed something to come up with pretty quickly because I've been using a lot of brain power for other things this week prepping for dad's service. But um, uh, so tonight's project went together pretty easily. I just changed the dimensions on what I've shared in the past. I shared a smaller one that was a one and a half inch cube and one that was longer. If you guys remember, it was, um, it was like a test tube that had a hot chocolate in it and I had a peppermint spoon. It was kind of all packaged together in uh, the other similar diagonal closure box. But um, I don't know. I just have fun when I sit down and design. I just kind of lose track of time. Um, and I don't really keep track of the supplies I go through. But some stuff does end up in the trash if I don't get it quite right. And that's okay. Always a learning experience. Um, I got that question. Julianne's asking where I got my ideas. I answered that earlier. Oh, I am Deborah. So actually not my dad's. We, for some reason, Greg and I cannot find my dad's wedding band. Um, but on my, let me see, this is kind of a cool thing. So on my right hand, I have, um, my mom's is the gold one. That's from 1970. Um, the really thin one is my maternal grandmother, Wheezy's. I can't remember the year that they got married. And then the one that's got a little bit of a pattern to it, that is from a wedding in 1918, and that was my maternal great-grandmother's ring. So I love wearing these three together. Um, just a great love legacy there. So yep, those are my my grandmother, my mother's, my grandmother's, and my great-grandmother's wedding bands. So thank you, great question. It is not critical to use the matching pieces, Linda. Actually, I was um, as I was choosing the pattern for tonight's card, um, I didn't love some of the front and backs together um, just because they would have the pattern on the front 
didn't have the color on the back. Um, so they would have looked maybe a little bit mismatched. Um, so absolutely grab um, coordinating stuff, but it does not have to be uh, matching pieces for the triangle sides. Um, I think that's what you're asking. Hopefully I answered that for you. Does Stampin' Up! have any plans in place for accommodating large influx of orders next week? Last order placed during the first day of the sale took a frustrating two and a half weeks to arrive. Utah to Arizona. Arizona. I totally understand. They had an unprecedented sales day. Um, it was actually 20 times more units than an average day. And so if you can imagine anything 20 times... Um, would be quite a shock. So they did everything they could to, and are still doing everything they can to add additional shifts. Um, they're pulling administrative staff to volunteer for shifts as well. And there's obviously only so much space on the pick line. Um, so they're doing everything they can to get orders out. Um, that sort of stepped back to April 4th. That was the biggest sales day in Stampin' Up's 35 year history. So completely unprecedented. And then we had an amazing free shipping day on April 19th that added a little bit to the backlog. They're doing everything they can. Um, and I trust that they will do everything they can as well as um, on May 2nd. So um, I understand it's frustrating. One of the great things is that um, craft, crafting pro craft products are always super exciting when they arrive. Um, I've got quite a few orders that I'm waiting on myself and I know it'll just be, it'll be, I'll be happy when they get here no matter when they get here. So, um, but they're doing the best they can. Uh, they do add staff, the Orange Dragonfly, so they um, will add temp staff, and they also pull folks from the administrative team as well to step in. Do I have something to put in the box? So yeah, Patty, not specifically tonight for you, um, but you know, a couple of different things. I didn't. This box I just designed to be a two by two inch square, uh, two by two by two box. Um, so you can fit a number of different things in there, but it's not sized specifically for any one type of thing. <laughs> You're really good at your cameo duties. Does he sometimes help with designing projects behind the scenes too? Um, he's actually always my second set of eyes. I'll design something and I'll show it to him and he'll sometimes help me. I will be like, I don't know about this. And he'll say, no, I like that better or I like this better. So yeah, he's my second set of eyes, whether he likes it or not. But um, he's also a pro at ribbon shares. So Brian actually does the ribbon shares completely on his, his own, believe it or not. So, um, which is good because the ribbon will arrive when I will be at my brother's graduation. So <laughs> you'll be working your magic while I'm out of town. Um, ooh, would a K-cup fit in the box? I cannot remember the measurements of a K cup. Hold on, I don't think I have one, but I'm checking. I do not have a K cup. Um, I am not sure if they're taller than two inches. So if anybody happens to have a K cup near you and could measure it, um, it'd be close if it doesn't fit, but great question. You think the little Tic Tacs would work? Yes, the um, not the one that I did last week, not the one ounce box, those won't fit. But yeah, the tiny Tic, -tac -tic Tacs would fit. Probably a couple packages of it. It might be a little too big of a box for those, but um, whoops. Are the polished dots going away when the new catalog drops? I couldn't remember how long the online exclusives were sticking around the polished dots. Are those, I don't even rem I don't even remember if those are in the online exclusives. You're not talking about these ones, I don't think. Um, I don't remember what's in the online exclusives. Um, um, as far as the online exclusives go, this is a little bit of a non-answer, but um, the product availability will be dependent on um, demand as well. So if you know if products are selling really well, then they will. Um, replenish the stock. Um, it gives them a little bit of the ability to be more nimble with uh, restocking and adding new products because they don't have to. They um, are about two years in advance. They've um, put together the catalogs. So the online exclusives give them a little bit more time to be nimble with that. But good question on that, Michelle. I may have to check on 
I'm not remembering the polished dots. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy, for the safe travels. Let's see. Is there a way that you can share with us the answer for Cindy on which of your products would fit a biscotti cookie? I would love to know also. I will try to remember to share that next week if I can figure it out. Um, I'm going to be out of pocket until Tuesday, but um, I will keep that in mind for sure. Um, Gina, yes, the paper share is open um, through Sunday for um, sign up. So I will be closing the sign up Sunday evening. Um, so by the time Monday morning rolls around, that will be closed. But yes, yeah, so the paperpixie.com slash shares. Uh, the, let's see, the instructions for making the hot chocolate test tube. Can you look that up and put it in the chat? Um, look for diagonal closure. We'll get that popped in the chat for you, Cynthia. Yes, Bobby, Greg is graduating from Ohio University in Athens, Ohio, with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. I could not be more proud of him. I can't wait to celebrate him, so... Uh, try typing, oh, keep scrolling. Uh, okay, try typing test tube. <laughs> um, there are no specials right now, Mulan, for join specials other than our normal everyday uh, $125 in product for $99. Um, it's green and red. Hmm. Maybe search for peppermint spoon. <laughs> uh. Ooh, Linda H. Thank you. K-cups are approximately one and a half inches in height, two inches in diameter across the top, and one and a half inches in diameter across the bottom. So here's where what I think you may need to do with... Actually, no, you should be fine. I was going to say you might want to put it upside down, um, but you should be fine putting it right side up. So yeah, that should work. Oh, grin, wink, wink, Nicole. Um, I do eat all of my stash. <laughs> I don't eat all of it, but yeah. Brian, do you, do you raid my treat drawer sometimes? Yeah, yeah. Brian, he, he's a midnight snacker. He'll raid my treat drawer. I raid, that's the one. Right. Thank you. Brian's going to put that in the chat for you, Cynthia. Um, yeah, I do raid my treat drawer. <laughs> So I guess the question is, when do you not? <laughs> um, they were out of stock and replenished, just wasn't sure. They're the loose dots. Oh, with the Hello Irresistible. Yeah, I don't know the answer of how long those will be available. But if they've been replenished, that's a good sign. What is an in color and how often are they changed? So darling, they actually change the in colors. Well, um, every year we get five new in colors, but they're with us for two years. So for example, right now we have the uh, 2021 to 2023 in colors and the 2022 to 2024. On Tuesday, the 2020 to 2022, no, geez Louise. The 2021 to 2023 are retiring, but we're keeping fresh freesia because that's rolling into the core colors. But we're going to have new 2023 to 2025 in colors. So they stick around for two years, but each year we get five new ones. There's always 10 in colors, and they're usually more trendy in nature, but they go really well with the core color families. And then they're with us for two years, and then they rotate out. And then we get new five new each year. So... Uh, thank you so much, Ramona, for the hugs, and uh, we appreciate that. Um, I'm looking forward to celebrating my dad, so. Um, okay, Kelly Binnick, thank you. Um, I will check that. Um, also, check your spam. The email would have come from, it's actually, technically it comes from Zero X E R O. That is my accounting software and um, what I use to invoice. Um, so sometimes that email address... Um, Email is a tricky thing sometimes with how emails end up in spam. But I'll keep, I will, um, I'll shoot you an email, Kelly, with a link to your invoice. Okay. And Barbara said she found hers. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I think I'm to the end of the questions, so thank you so very much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's projects or learned a great tip or two, please remember to like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. That will help us here on YouTube. I will be live next Wednesday for episode 281 of Live with the Paper Pixie. We'll be, I'll be back from Ohio. Um, I appreciate all of your thoughts, prayers, condolences. We feel the love, um, and I just can't say how much we appreciate all of you. So I'm um, looking forward to family time this weekend, despite the circumstances. Again, I'm going to be out of pocket, except for urgent things that come up between now and Tuesday when I return back to work. I'll be back to work first thing Tuesday morning because that is when the annual catalog goes live and I'll be getting in the product share and in color club orders. So just as a reminder, Sunday, April 30th is the cutoff for my product shares and in color club. Um, so if you're interested in, in participating in that, I will put links in the description when I upload the project sheets that will get posted tonight. And as always, reach out if you have any questions. The best way to reach me is support at thepaperpixie.com. And I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. I will see you next Wednesday. Take good care and talk soon. Bye.